Yes, hello together. Welcome back to DotStorm Report. Today I will talk about Energiewende. Energiewende means German uh, energy transition, the way to net zero. So the complete use of fossil fuels and like uh, carbon, oil and gas has to be substituted by green energies, mainly wind and solar. What I, do t what I do here is just to explain the main models of energy transition, but I will explain these models used on spreadsheets and calculations so you can follow how the calculation steps are done to get to net zero. You will be able to see what are the cost assumptions, what is the timeline, what is the roadmap and so on. So let's start first with the uh, assumptions, with the uh, basic principles of the models that are used for the German energy transition. So the model assumptions you can see here. First of all, where does the data come from? In Germany we have the Bundesministerium für Wirtschaft, which is uh, the Ministry of Economy, and uh, they have all the energy data collected in Excel sheets that are freely available. You can download these sheets, you can calculate with these sheets. It's an excellent database. You find all the energy data of Germany, primary energy and energy use, use of renewable energies and so on. Everybody is studies with these Excel sheets. On the other hand, I will uh, make the assumption to do a complete energy transition. So. All the energy that is used today, coal, gas, everything will be substituted. Nothing remains, no, no fossil fuel remains in any way. Everything will be green. We have to know that uh, energy production accounts for 60% of the global share of greenhouse gases. Yeah? If you see on a global base, 60% of the greenhouse gases, they come from energy production and 40% from other sources mainly from agriculture, from burning wood and so on, from, from burning forests. Agriculture is the main part. You have a consumption of meat, though the cows they have a lot of uh, methane, uh, um, emissions from their stomachs. You have as well the, the rice fields and so on. You have uh, nitrites that come from the fertilizers that you have in the ground at, at the end of the day. Uh, there's created uh, nitrite that is um, evaporating to the air, which is very harmful as well. So this 40% share, which is as well man-made from agriculture, I do not consider to substitute. I only focus on the energy model, on the energy production or related fields. We will only work with solar energy and with wind as main sources. And as well, we, may, we will make use of geothermal energy. Here it is important to know that in Germany, Germany has a special situation because Germany decided not to go ahead with nuclear power. So in 2022, the last three nuclear power plants will be closed. We will see what happens. We have a current crisis situation. There is a discussion. There is a lack of energy in Germany. But in general, the decision was made to go out of nuclear power. We are in the European grid. On the French side, you have uh, more than 50 nuclear power stations. Nevertheless, every country, Europe, every 50 miles, a different story. Germany goes out, France uh, still going. We are on the same grid with, with France, so we will still use nuclear power. But for the German model, we do not take into account that there will be any type of nuclear power in the production. And on the other hand, carbon capture and storage, another issue, the Germans uh, today, they don't like so much this issue as well because for as well for environmental reasons. So I do not consider in this model as well carbon capture and storage. The model that I present you in general is based on, on a mix of different models that are available, for example, from Fraunhofer Institute, from Agora Energiewende. Nevertheless, as some studies are already some years old, that's why I have modified the data because I want to go for, for the latest data and for the latest tendencies of the uh, energy transition because there's a lot of new technologies or uh, technologies that we already have like batteries. They have now such high options and yield that we can use them for much more applications and the, the panorama has changed. This is a front page of the report 
of the Bundesministerium for Wirtschaft and Energy. You can download as well, you can personally download the Excel sheets if you have to study or if you're interested to take the data source or to study about the German market. Everything is perfectly available and totally for free. Okay, let's start now with the first concept, which is primary energy consumption by energy source. So my macroeconomic situation is that I'm importer of mineral oil, of gas, I have coal, I have own coal, maybe I, I do import coal, I have brown coal in Germany, we have a lot of, of brown coal uh, sources in Germany, we have nuclear power, hydropower, wind, photovoltaics, other renewables and so on. That are our primary sources. You all know mineral oil, gas, coal and so on, widely known, nuclear energy, I do not have to explain. Concerning the renewable sources in Germany, hydropower, you know hydropower, uh, on the other hand wind power and PV, uh, both are widely used. You had a very special situation in the year 2000 when Germany a lot of subsidies were created and then the market grew very dynamically. But in the recent years, uh, it stopped a little bit the growth. That was a big political discussion. Nevertheless, wind and PV today, together with hydropower, have reached a share of 6% of the total primary energy use in Germany. And then we have other renewable energies. Other renewable is principally biomass systems, uh, wood firing and so on. Uh, rubbish uh, burning and so on, garbage burning, though these are other renewable energies that can today, where everybody says, okay, this cannot be expanded so much. It would be in the future be able to get some more contribution from other renewables, but uh, this is more or less finished. Power as well in Germany for infrastructure or for the for the situation where we have mainly already used all available options from our uh, geology to use the hydropower. So we have remaining wind and photovoltaic systems to go forward and geothermal systems. We have a foreign trade balance yeah, because we do import and export depending on the market situation some electricity. And then we have other sources that are some specialities, for example, gases from, from mining, from coal mining, there are additional gases that get free that can be burned and so on. These are additional uh, factors. The interesting, what you see in the primary energy use, that really only 6% is wind power, uh, photovoltaic and hydro even. So it's a very low share of renewable energies in the primary use and other renewables tend. So less than 20% of the energy in Germany is really produced with renewable sources. All the rest is fossil or nuclear. The people very often think, oh, we have a lot, a lot of green energy and so on. Why? Because um, all what you will see later, uh, one sixth part of the total energy is electricity and all the rest is other energy uses. So the people focus a lot on electricity. And that's true that in Germany we have already nearly 50% of green use. But if you see the primary energy, you see only uh, 6% or let's say less than 20% of renewables. So we know where we have to go. We have to get at least five or six times more renewable energy to get to a whole energy transition. Okay. Let's have now a look where, where does all this primary energy goes to, where is it used? Yeah? You have, let's say, in 2020, 11,899 petajoule of energy that you have as a primary. And then you do consumption and losses in the energy sector. What does it mean? When you produce, electric, when you produce electricity, for example, from coal or gas or whatever, you lose a lot of energy because you have a thermal process, a circle process. And for example, in case of a coal plant, two thirds of the energy is lost. It simply goes through the cooling tower. You cannot use this. So, all these losses is a very big share, 2,614 in this case. And then you have a non-energy consumption as well of this primary energy. What does it mean? 
oil and gas are used in the chemical industry. So you use a very big part of all this primary energy for making of chemical products, of plastic products and so on. Very important. It's called uh, primary energy consumption. But in this case, if I use oil, really it would not be primary energy because you use it as a raw material. Nevertheless, it's included in the energy sector. So all the plastic production, all the big chemical industry that we have in Germany is included in this concept. And um, there's not an energy use. It's a product that is that is uh, produced at the end or manufactured at the end of the day. So we have the final energy consumption. 2020, the final energy was 8,341 petajoule. That was a yearly use of all the sectors. And then this shares is shared to the different industries. No? Industry, we have a, a traffic and cars, trucks and so on that have a 27. The industry itself, 28. We have uh, private homes, private households, 29%. And then uh, businesses, smaller business, commercial services and so on, service industry, uh, and other 15% of use. So if we want to make a whole energy transition, we must be sure that all these four groups, industry, traffic, households, and the businesses and services get the energy, but instead of origin coal or gas or whatever, they need green energy. How can we handle this? First of all, we have to understand what are the end energy types that are used because we want to substitute end energy. We want to substitute the energy in the point of consumption. And here in this uh, sheet, you can see how the shares of the different energies are what types of energies are really used at the end point, at the consumer point. First of all, coal, 4% in 2020, 4% of the end energy uses coal. Before it was a massive share, and here is only 4% because before you used most of the coal to produce electricity. And here in this sheet, you can see electricity as well, which has a share of 21%. So nearly all the coal, that we used a lot of gas was transformed to electricity. That's why in the end energy use that you have here, the coal is only 4%. Where do you use coal? Well, you have some coal ovens, you may have some coal burners in the industry and so some coal boilers in the industry that you still use. But as end energy, coal is not used so much. You use it as well in the, in the steel production and so on. But that is the only uh, direct end consumption of final energy use of coal. The same for brown coal, even less, some very small application maybe you have in some households or some small industries, you have brown coal, but in principle it's forbidden. You cannot use it anymore for, for, for heating processes and so on. But there are some, some special purposes where brown coal is still used as end energy, but most of the brown coal, the same, it's used to produce electricity, though in the final energy use, brown coal nearly disappeared. Then we have the fuel. Um, all what we had, to be, a lot of uh, mineral oil is transformed into, into diesel, gasoline and so on. Fuel is very important for all the vehicles, for all the trucks, for the cars, for the ships, for the, for the trains and so on, to, uh, for, for railway applications. So that is absolutely clear. Fuel is a very big share, 27%. So we have to talk about the transport sector. We have then uh, heating a light fuel or heating fuels in general well you have the oil burner oil burners in the houses a very common application it will be forbidden in the future but you have still a lot of oil burners in the private homes you have a lot of oil burners in the industry for process heating or just for for room heating and so on oil is a very important or especially light fuel oil with a seven percent share is very important Heavy heating oil is less than uh, 1%, has a very small share. Then we have uh, gas with 26%. What do you use gas as, as final energy? Gas is mainly used for uh, process heating in the industry and for heating for room heating in industry and as well at home. 
in the last 20 years, many people changed to gas heating in the cities. There were a lot of uh, subsidies were invested that the people changed their burners to gas burners. That's why today we have in Germany such a big uh, dependency to gas. Everything was changed to gas because during many times we said gas is green and gas is much better and gas is cleaner. In the combustion point, gas is very clean, but natural gas has a problem of the methane, which is very high um, greenhouse gas. And in the gas lines, you have a lot of leakage. So gas is not really much greener than coal, for example. Nevertheless, in the combustion point, you have a big advantage because you are much greener. That's why there were a lot of subsidies were spent. And now uh, the dependency on Germany from the gas is due to this situation. 26% of the final energy is gas. And a big share before was already using the primary energy for the electricity. So that is a very big issue to change gas to green energies as well. Then we have electricity. So electricity was before created by nuclear, by primary energies like nuclear, coal and so on. That is already a very high value energy and it's 21% share in the final energy use. You all know where we use the electricity. Interesting to see that in the final energy only one fifth part of the share is now electricity. Before in the primary energy it was one sixth part and here we have one fifth is final energy electricity. Then we have district heating as well as what from, from, uh, from power plants for example you take the hot water normally it goes through the heating tower it's lost but there are as well a lot of district heating systems in Germany but much less than you have for example in Denmark or some northern countries where district heating is very popular. It's a very nice technology to take use of the energy that you would lose from, the, from a power plant, for example. And then what you see as well, this is 10% share of firewood, uh, pellets and so on. Um, you have extremely high share of, of especially of firewood in Germany. You have a lot of forests, the people like a lot their chimneys, the people use it a lot, they, like, they do pellet burners and so on. So this is a 10% share. So you would say, okay, if this is already in the, in the final energy consumption, already 10% share, why don't you just go for 30%? Well, in this case, we, are already, we have already reached some limits. And as well, from the, from the green point of view, the idea is not to expand very much, for example, the firewood due to the uh, micro dust problem. So in general, for the use of the forest and for the micro dust problem as well, the general consensus today in Germany is that we will have a 10% of share of this use of, of firewood, for example, and, and other uh, burning sources, green burning sources or, or biomass, but it will not be so, uh, so expandable. Okay, what we have to do now is everything which is not green energy in this sheet, everything which is not already existing green energies, or everything which is not already wind or hydropower or solar, has to be transformed. All the end energy or the final energy use has to be, we need a technology to change it to green energy. How does it work? So first of all, I have to define my transition technologies and I have to make some assumptions. Okay, if I want to, to substitute all the fossil energy, I need transition technologies. So what are my 10 principles, the, the 10 basic principles for the technology that I used? First of all, the entire final energy consumption and the fossil raw materials for the chemical uses will be substituted. So everything, what all the energy that are produced from fossils has to be produced from wind and PV and all the hydrocarbons that are used in the chemical industry as well have to be produced 
from wind and solar, for example. So how can I do this? Because it's, it's how, how can we do this? Because mineral oil is hydrocarbon and gas is hydrocarbon. So how do I do this? First of all, I have to uh, make hydrogen with electrolysis and then I can, with further uh, synthesis, create hydrocarbons by adding uh, carbon atoms, uh, by special chemical process and so on. For this, I need a lot of energy. So, and this energy I have to add. When you see all the end energy that I use at the moment, I have to add more energy to be able to create hydrocarbons from nothing, let's say, just from, from water, electrolysis, and then synthesis to reach a longer change of hydrocarbons that I can use in my chemical industry. The next one is that existing energy that what I have already, I take over one to one. If I take wind and PV, I will expand the technologies. I will expand uh, CO thermal, deep CO thermal energies. But for example, what, what I mentioned before, the, what I have already resisting, for example, in biomass and wood burning and so on, or biogas installations, for example, as an other example of, of green sources, I will not expand this. Why? I mentioned before for wood firing and so on with our uh, forest management, we have already reached some limits. We cannot expand this now, for example, to double this. We could do a little bit more, but it would not help. Concerning the biomass, um, sorry, concerning the, the biodiesel, for example, biofuels or biogas systems as well, there's a big discussion because everybody says if it's made from, for example, from garbage products or from from uh, other things that you really do not use that would be waste directly, then it's okay. For example, food waste or, so, or from agricultural uh, products or whatever that you would not use, then it's okay to make biogas. But today what is made is you, you use a corn that could be food and you put it to make biogas. So you have a lot of production of biogas in Germany by this means and uh, today there's a big discussion because people say why, why do I have to take food and to make biogas it doesn't make a sense why because if you see what you really comes out per surface when you do this type of um, if you do it by corn biogas and then you produce electricity you could install a wind turbine or you could maybe m make photovoltaic and in between you could have nearly the same plants and before you could make food and at the same time much more energy than you would do for example with a biogas installation so the, the common consensus is now not to expand the biogas systems in Germany. That's why I say everything that is existing energy, green energy, will be taken over one to one in this model. Then the traffic. We all know about the vehicles. Everybody, I think, will agree now that the future will be uh, battery vehicles, will be the main issue. So my idea is that for example, all the passenger cars will be with battery driving in general. Then what happened to the trucks or what happened to railway, for example? From my supposition, before it was said, oh, railway will be or trucks, uh, hydrogen and so on. There was a big discussion. From my point of view, the battery will as well have a very big share and this is a supposition that is looking in the future nobody can watch in the future can only make my assumptions that are a little bit what is what are the tendencies on the market at the moment but in my model the suppositions is that trucks for example will be 50% uh, with battery 30% with hydrogen so even less than battery because my supposition is battery will develop so fast that you will have much more performance in the future and 20% uh, catenary okay you will say oh how does it work yeah it, on the motorway you can install a catenary for example to move trucks to load trucks during driving or that they can uh, directly drive with the energy that is coming down from the catenary to the system and on the other hand as well you have to see that the railway system in germany as well there's a big discussion to expand the railway system and uh, as well, there's, a, there's a, a, let's say 40% of the railway network maybe does not have 
any type of catenary. So there will be investments in this well as well, but I only take a 20% share of catenary. Nevertheless, you can discuss this model and you will find all kind, all kind of assumptions. For my model, this one is assumption. Then for house heating as well, that will is not so much uh, issue of debate. Everybody agrees it will be heat pumps for heating and for hot water. So I use this technology. I will use as well deep geothermal systems. Why deep geothermal is is a very nice technology because you have energy during the whole year and the temperature goes up to 300 degrees for the hot water that you can get from the ground. So 24 uh, hours energy for free during, during the whole year. It's a very positive situation. And uh, so I use a lot of geothermal energy as well. Then the next step is a process heat. For process heat as well, I will need hydrogen systems because um, you need a high temperature. You have to substitute gas with a gas burner or you have, for example, a, a furnace in the, in the metallurgical industry and so on. You need temperatures maybe a thousand degrees. So you need a gas system in general or, or oil. And so you have to substitute it by, by a hydrogen burning system, for example. So you need green hydrogen to substitute this process. Some of these processes can as well be substituted with, uh, for example, induction furnaces and so on. But in general, the superstition will be use of hydrogen or in some cases as well, uh, let's say, for example, geothermal if you talk about a temperature range from 200 up to 200 or 300 degrees maximum. Then as well, I need a storage because everybody says, oh, it's very nice green energy, but uh, where you are, sometimes you have it, sometimes you do not have it. No, in the past 10 years ago, everybody said it's never possible to make energy transition because of a lack of storage. What is the situation here? 30% of my daily consumption, I need intermediate storage of my daily. And uh, this I will do with battery systems because the battery technology develops so fast. Even though now in Germany, everybody uh, is, is thinking about installing a battery in his own house. Yeah? Many people are thinking to install PV panels all around the house and doing a full uh, full consumption of by, uh, by using their own electricity and so on. The battery systems, the prices have gone down so fast and, and we're waiting 20 years more of improvement. So from the short term storage, everybody agrees, battery will be the big, the big deal. But then we have to as well, we need a seasonal storage because the, all the models that are used, Fraunhofer, Agora, everybody is using a lot of photovoltaic energy. And uh, photovoltaic means that you have a lot of energy in summer and not so much in winter. You need at, uh, something like a third part of the global energy share that you produce has to be taken from summer to winter. How will this be done? Hydrogen as well. You have to produce green hydrogen with electrolysis. And then in the winter or in the colder months, you can then create electricity with this green hydrogen with a fuel cell and you can get the energy that you harvest in summer, you can get it back in winter. Uh, air traffic is the only application where I take into account e-fuels, that is from my point of view, is the only application where I would use e-fuels because uh, from today point of view, it's, uh, we do not have a, a, a next to the door hydrogen technology or battery technology to move aircrafts. Nevertheless, sure that in 30 years we will have a different situation. But my transition model talks about uh, the next 30 years. So my supposition is that F, that e-fuels will have a big share. And as I mentioned before, all the chemical products will be substituted as well. Really full transition. I will not import any drop of oil or nothing, nothing more, nothing more gas will come into the country. So I have to create hydrocarbons uh, by using electrolysis and then to, to make synthesis to have hydrocarbon uh, molecules that I can use in my industry, my chemical industry for plastic products or everything that I do to do with oil and gas in the future will be green hydrogen 
and then synthesis to hydrocarbons. Okay, based on this 10 assumption, we are now able to create the transition model, which means an Excel sheet that starts from the existing models based on, on fossil fuels and that will calculate what will be the new model which is based only on wind and PV and some CO3 values. Yeah, I will show you now the main calculation tool uh, to make that transition from one energy model to the other one. I will explain you how this works. It's a calculation matrix that calculates from the existing fossil model to the electricity based green energy model. First of all, uh, to understand the different groups that we have defined here, we have room heating, hot sanitary water, process heat, cold air conditioning, process refrigeration, mechanical energy, and uh, information climate technology, lightning by electricity. These are the different groups where I use my end energy. And within all the different groups, the end energy can come from a different source. For example, from light, fuel oil, from gas, electricity, district heating, carbon, renewables, and so on. So for every group, you have a different use of existing technologies. And some of these technologies are already green. They are already renewable energies, but most of them are based on fossil fuels. You see here another time the total energy. We have 8,340 petajoule. That was exactly the same value that we had before when I explained the final or the end energy use in Germany. This is 8,340 petajoule. This is 100% according to our existing model. Though the calculation principle is very simple. I have an existing technology which is shown here and for every technology and every group I am using some part of energy. So what I have to do is simply to decide what is the new technology that I will use to come to the green model. For example, example given. For room heating I use a lot of light fuel oil. The typical oil heating, the oil burner that I have in the, uh, in the house and uh, I will substitute this by a heat pump. For example, a heat pump is electrically driven and so I go from oil to a heat pump, electric energy and then I can use a green energy from wind and solar to make the heat pump run. In the same line, for every line, I will have the calculation how is the new efficiency when I change from one model to the other. So in the case of the heat pump, it's very easy. When I use light fuel or oil for heating, then the energy goes into the water. I lose maybe 30% over the chimney. I have 70% left. When I use a heat pump, I have a much better efficiency because for one unit of electricity, I can create four units of heat energy. So to calculate the transformation, you can see here an efficiency. Efficiency means what is this efficiency compared to the original uh, technology, in this case to the original fossil technology. I have a 400% efficiency, so I'm four times better compared to the original one. Though I go line by line, for example, for all the room heating I have heat pump mainly for to substitute oil, to substitute gas heating. And then I have as well some technologies that I'm using that I will not change. Or everything that I will not change is, is named unchanged. The green ones are concepts that will not be changed. For example, I do already electricity heating, I say unchanged. Many of this is already with heat pumps. District heating, unchanged. I will not change this, it's already okay. District heating is a good concept. Uh, carbon, I will change to heat pump as well. In Germany, you still have some carbon heatings. Then renewables, I will not change. I said before, everything that I have on renewable, I will not change. And then other sources, the same. I just say, I will not change this, a small side technologies. This is for room heating. So room heating will be mainly heat pump. 
and what we can see we get a much better efficiency compared to the original one then we go to hot sanitary water in this case exactly the same we use we use oil we use gas and so on some electricity some energy some renewable energies everything which is oil and gas all the fossils will be substituted by heat pump and here the efficiency is a little bit lower i only put a 300 percent why because hot sanitary water has a higher temperature and then the heat pump has a slightly lower efficiency but still a very good efficiency factor three compared to the fossil use let's go to the next group process heat okay that looks very nice now because at the average you see uh, the global difference of the group you have for example in the case of room heating you say 50% of global energy in the case of hot sanitary water more than 40% in this calculation model but it's not always like this some cases you need more energy so and this the next one the process heat is an example process heat is very important for the industry but you need very high temperature and that is where the oil and gas have a very good advantage compared to another technology because with an oil burner, gas burner, flame, it's not a problem to get to 1000 degrees or more, no problem. I can use it for all type of processes in all type of, of industries. So what is my substitution to get such high temperature? For the high temperature range, I need hydrogen, no option. I have to do hydrolysis. Uh, sorry, I have to do electrolysis and uh, to make uh, hydrogen molecules and then I have to use some type of burning process to get such a high temperature. Though I get a lower efficiency because the production of green hydrogen today takes a lot of energy as well and the global efficiency is only 60%. So I, here I go down, I have to spend more energy, but don't forget it will be green energy. So the global model, it will be okay, but I need more compared to the fossil input. Then we have as well some unchanged. We use already electricity, we use district heating and so on. We use renewables. What we have to say for process heat in general, I can as well use some CO geothermal energy because uh, CO geothermal, the advantage is that I get te temperatures of up to 300 degrees hot water from, from deep drilling of uh, CO thermal energy. So I can use as well some of this share, I can use CO thermal energy. Let's go to the next group, cold air conditioning. Well, here I cannot change a lot because um, most of the technologies uh, is based um, on uh, electricity already so more or less we stay in the same range not not a big improvement for air conditioning and at the end of the day air conditioning is already a heat pump so um, I cannot improve this a lot then let's go to the next step which is process refrigeration the same I cannot uh, make a big improvement let's forget about air conditioning process refrigeration that will stay in the same range and let's go to the next concept which is the mechanical energy and here is where we have a very big saving because it's mainly transport sector mechanical energy for one on one hand is a transport sector all the vehicles that are moving and the trucks and railway and so on that is the biggest share and then as well i have some electro motors in the industry running a lot not some a lot so it's a, it's a big share as well electricity is using a lot of energy but most of the mechanical energy in our global macroeconomic system is used for transport of vehicles or something that is moving on the road on the rail or whatever or airplane so this can be substituted one by one before i told i i have my specific uh, calculation where i say first of all all the motor vehicles passenger vehicles will be battery driven so what do i have here i have a battery vehicle and the global efficiency is at least three times better than compared to a standard combustion engine so i have a factor three where i get better then the same for diesel fuel diesel fuel i, I use in cars and a lot of passengers cars are diesel fuel but as well uh, trucks uh, for short distance so i say all the short distance with trucks and all the passenger vehicles as well will be a battery vehicle 
Why? Because the battery has such a good development that sure that the battery share, even in trucks, will be very high in the future. Then we go for the long distance trucks. Then I apply to say, okay, hydrogen. What's, that's what I mentioned before, that 30% of the global mechanical transport will be done with some hydrogen technology. Why? Because for long distance is quite a good technology. But uh, before in the beginning, maybe some years ago, people say, okay, all the trucks will be with hydrogen, but that is not really the idea. I think there will be a lot of trucks with uh, hydrogen, but a lot of battery trucks as well in the future. It will be mixed technology. And then as well, catenary will as well be an application, for example, for railway is interesting. And in Germany, they are studying quite a lot of models to put catenaries on the motorway and then to drive trucks, to load trucks directly with a catenary. That is as well an interesting technology. So the efficiency depends on every application. For example, a battery vehicle factor three is three times better, let's say, than a standard combustion engine. Hydrogen, at the end of the day, I'm one to one because um, when I have created the hydrogen is okay, but um, the, the standard um, diesel or gasoline motor has a lot of losses, but hydrogen as well needs a lot of energy to be, be produced. So at the end of the day, I do not win one, one to one, let's say for hydrogen. Catenary is a spectacular because you really go directly uh, factor four compared, for example, to a diesel. If you could have a diesel truck that you have on the motorway and it would be able to put a catenary, the, the, the factor would be four, the efficiency factor would be four. Then for aviation and aircraft, I will propose e-fuels and some hydrogen, but mainly e-fuels. E-fuels have a very low efficiency. I need a lot of energy to produce e-fuels, but chemically I'm nearly able to uh, imitate kerosene though I can use uh, all the existing aircraft I could put uh, green e-fuels and for me this is the only application where I, can, where I say e-fuels make a sense a specific application the global efficiency is only 50 percent because you need so many energy to produce e-fuels that you are even worse than the kerosene but on the other hand what I said before if you make it with green energy 100 percent then it will be okay then for the other issues for transport, we have some gas motors. I would say let's do it as well with electric motors. And then we have already electricity, renewables, other sources that I put as unchanged. As a global result, we can say that in this calculation model, as a specific model with specific assumptions, but that go in the same direction of all the models that you can find, the transport sector will save more than 27% or not transport, the mechanical energy sector, but which is mainly transport sector, 27% less consumption. Very attractive. And this mainly due to the high efficiency of the battery technology that is de developing faster and faster. Then the other issues are not so important as well. For example, uh, information and communication technology, it's a very high use as well. Nearly 3% of the global final energy use is ICT, but it's already electrical, uh, it's already renewable. And then you, you have some oil use, for example, backup systems or backup generators for to to make sure that the system will work if there's a blackout or whatever this in the future will be done with battery systems as well i put efficiency one to one but it can be substitute uh, the battery systems will be able to s substitute uh, backup systems based on fuels and so on the same situation for electric lightning already used electricity mainly so electricity and renewables so i say unchanged there will be no system change, the same efficiency. And the only thing as well, we have some backup systems with oil uh, for lightning and so on. So the same, it should be with a battery system. So we should take out of the market the combustion systems or generators or whatever that are used in some spots, which are not necessary anymore. So when we do the global calculation, then we have at the starting point 8,340 Petajoule of energy that we 
uh, had the use at final energy. This is official value from the German statistic, what I mentioned before, that, that is what you find when you su see the final energy in Germany. And then at the end of the day, when I make my whole transition with all green tech, all auxiliary technologies, batteries, heat pumps, everything what I have to apply, hydrogen technology, then at the end of the day, I will arrive at 6,873 petashoule. And this is a new value that I have to make sure to produce or what that I would have to produce doing exactly the same that I'm doing here. So on the right side, you can see my final result of the calculation and the final energy need that I will have with a new green model where everything is changed to heat pump, battery vehicles, everything, all the green tech is fully applied. I'm producing my energy with wind and solar mainly, some geothermal and uh, only for the savings that I have from the heat pumps, especially from the heat pumps and the battery vehicles, that is the main drivers for savings, I can go down with my end energy consumption from 8,340, which is a value of the fossil based model, I will reach a value of 6,873, which is 17% less. So this saving is already very positive and it's a side effect of my energy transition to the new model. Okay, please let's remember this value 6873. That is my final energy use, but the and based that is my final energy use and based on this value now I will go on to calculate the final need. What is what I really have to build uh, as additional capacity for wind and solar. Let's come to the next spreadsheet. With this Excel sheet now we were able to calculate what is my energy need after doing the whole transition. First of all, good news, I can save 70% uh, of the end energy. In some areas I win, in some areas I lose, but the global is 70% less. Nevertheless, now we have to, to go uh, to keep calculating what will be then the global picture with all the factors. First of all, on this sheet, you can see another time my direct final energy demand in Germany with complete electrification, 6,873 petajoule. I put here as well uh, terawatt hours, yeah, that you have a comparison. So this 6,873, that is what I have to produce according to my former matrix. Now, I have to add another time factors because what I showed before did not include my hydrocarbons for the chemical industry, my hydrocarbons for, uh, for example, for, for plastics and so on, plastic materials. So I have to add another time 944 petajoule of non-energy use of fossils. That is when, when, you, when you remember from the primary energy use that was the mineral oil and gas that I do not use for energy, that I use for chemical products. So, but what is the problem? I have this already as hydrocarbons. When I buy mineral oil as hydrocarbon, gas is already a hydrocarbon, natural gas for example. So I have now to produce a hydrocarbon. I need energy. I need energy to make electrolysis and I, then I need energy to make synthesis of hydrocarbons. So we have to add another time 1533 petajoule to the system that we are able to make this substitution of the hydroca hydrocarbon product. Now then I have a complete need of 9391 petajoule that is the whole energy that I need in my system the whole end energy that I have to be able to produce next step energy saving what will be impossible to keep going with exactly the same system that would be crazy we have to invest a lot in energy saving. Everybody agrees on this. You have to improve industrial processes. You have to make it more efficient. You have to be able 
to isolate all your houses, your homes, your commercial buildings and so on. And globally we have to reach a 30% of reduction of the energy use in the system. So it's not only just a simple uh, tr simple transition as well we need really very efficient energy saving processes so this energy saving then I can take out then we will have as well a contribution of 1080 petajoule by deep CO thermal energy this is a very interesting green energy source it is not used so much in Germany why because you need you have to do a lot of trial drillings that you get that you find something interesting in the ground the problem is that for example private investors they don't do deep CO thermal energy and f because you have to do a lot of trials and maybe you do not find nothing even the the cities like Berlin or Munich there, there are some cities that had invested in this technology but that is a typical issue where the state, the, the global government has to invest because they can do, for example, uh, 100 drillings and they have uh, 20 sites where they have an interesting result. That must be a global investment from the state and then to do the drillings and then after the drilling is successful to put it available for the industry or for the local city governments. If you take out the energy savings and the contribution by deep CO thermal energy then you have a remaining part of 5493 petajoule now I have to add another time some losses to the system why because I do energy storage I have some small losses for example for battery storage I'm talking in general about 10 percent so if I if I take an energy part and I put it in the battery and then uh, I take it back to my grid, I will lose some 10% of energy, so the short-term storage of lithium or battery systems, I will have a loss of 165 petajoule, and then the long-term storage, I have a higher loss, three times more, why? Because long-term storage means I have to create hydrogen, I have to go back to the fuel cell, today the global efficiency of this process is only uh, less than 40 percent but there are constant improvements in the model here I, I'm, I'm thinking about a global efficiency of 60 percent but then it means you have to add 659 petajoule to the system for the losses that you have from the from the long-term storage or from the seasonal storage so then if you put everything together then you have the total demand for the energy transition system, including intermediate storage needs, which are 6,317 petajoule. And then, this is what I would have to produce with my green new green system, let's say. So from this I can now take out, what do I have already to do from wind power and photovoltaic? From wind and photovoltaic today, in the end energy I have 653 petajoule that is what I have already I don't have to produce it I have it already in the system it's my existing stock of energy production and then I have already an existing from other renewable energies and there I put the hydropower hydropower within this concept of the other renewable as you remember wood burning I have uh, biomass other biomass systems I have biodiesel biogas systems, uh, green garbage, uh, garbage burning and, and as well the hydropower that is another 1308 and all this I have already today in the system so I do not have to produce as well. So I take this out and then I have net increase in energy demand after technical depreciation so that means I need 4357 petajoule of production per year more than by green energy if I want to do the whole energy transition. That is the main result. So now I have to say, okay, what can I do every year? How much more green energy, how many petajoules more will I be able to produce with this system? I will be, though my assumption is simply to say, okay, I take 135 every year more petajoule of production and then you just uh, say today we are 2020 and you divide 4357 by 135 
that means 32 years, in 2054, you would be able to do the whole energy transition. Okay, that sounds very nice, but it only works <laughs> if we we've install enough of wind and enough of uh, solar. Now the question is, 135, is it realistic or is it utopia? So in order to show, to show you that 135 can be considered a realistic value, I will show you the next graph. What you can see here is a development of wind and solar starting from 1990 in Germany. What I put here is not the production capacity I put on here in megawatt or gigawatt of installed PV or wind systems. I put directly the additional energy production from wind, solar or both from year to year because I install a system, I install more production capacity and then the next year I will produce more green energy. So this is not directly proportional to expansion of the investment. Why? Because if I have a year with a lot of wind, even if I have the same, I will have a little bit more. If I have a lot of sun, even if I have the same, I will see a higher value for the sun. Nevertheless, if I install more, I will get more on the long term, if I do an average over some years. And for me, it's only important to show, I was talking before about uh, that I need uh, yearly 135 petajoule more installed. Uh, I need to produce every year 135 petajoule more of energy. Is it really feasible? The answer is yes. If you see, for example, the average of the last 10 years, you will see that you had some years where you nearly reached an additional energy production by green energy of, of 100 petajoule. And for example, in 2017, you reach an additional production of nearly 100 petajoule. The average that you have is 50 petajoule, for example, additional production. If you take an average, let's say about the last eight years, for example. So it is feasible because uh, we saw that an average of 50, but we have to reach for some three times more, 135, 150 would be a feasible value. We had a year where we had 100. So if we really make a very good plan, a very good investment plan, and we make a very big expansion, then we will be able to reach another time, a very aggressive grow value, uh, growth, uh, values of green energy and that will enable us to produce for example to ramp up this system during five years uh, we have now uh, it was very criticized especially the last uh, years from the from the uh, conservative government the, the Merkel year, years let's say always was a little criticized that in some way it was frozen the green energy really totally frozen it was not frozen but what we have to do now is to do a ramp up of the system over the next five years, for example, to reach, let's say, uh, 150 every year, to really produce every year 150 more. And then after 30 years, it would be able to reach this global value that I've mentioned before to have a complete transition model. Okay, from the engineering and technical point of view, from the technology availability, the energy transition is feasible nobody has a doubt about it the question is now about the cost what will be the cost green energy is it is a very cheap source of energy but you need uh, storage capacity and so on though you have to add a storage cost if you want to do the whole uh, macro uh, calculation to see how is the cost comparison of the fossil model compared to the new green uh, carbon dioxide free model. So let's uh, go now to the calculations. What you see here is the first of all what I will do. I will do a cost comparison between the new green model and the existing fossil model. So first of all we can see here the cost per year of our fossil model. It's a very simplified model simply saying by uh, today I'm using this fossil energies and this green energies as primary energy so i i come back to my initial 
a spreadsheet to my initial sheet where we talk about the primary energy that we use in the macroeconomics in Germany. We use a mineral oil, coal, brown coal, natural gas and so on, all the sources, the green sources. So we have a specific use of uh, amount of energy that we put in our country in petajoule, indicated in petajoule. The same value set we had before for 2020, we are reaching 11,899 uh, petajoule of primary energy use for the different sources. Then what I do simply is you calculate the price. You have a unit for the price, for example, for the oil, you have a price in US dollar per barrel. You make a transition factor to calculate the price to euro per kilowatt hour. I did this simply because we use different uh, units or price units for every energy. I want to, to use the same because it's, then it's easier to compare. It's interesting as well to compare what is the price per kilowatt per the energies. And then you can calculate how many money do you spend. Yeah? What is the result of this? You see that the fossil energies are extremely cheap. We all know this or they were extremely cheap. What I show you here are prices from 2018. Why did I take from 2018? I, I use the energy amount of 2020 prices from 2018. Uh, why? Because 2020 we had even negative oil prices for the Corona situation. I cannot use this price would be would be a result that is not uh, logical in any way. So I used the last, let's say, normal price before Corona situation, which was 2018. And I put it with the energy of amount of 2020. If you calculate everything together, then you get a total invest or total yearly expense in 2020 of 175 billion euro that I had to spend for all my primary energy that I used in my country. Okay. I take the prices for nuclear energy. I took a price of 10 cent. I took a price of hydro, wind and PV of 15 cent. It is higher than you would consider today. Nevertheless, uh, in this price, we have a stock of existing installation that were that had much more subsidies that were much much more expensive than what we have today in green power I took every price of 15 cent as well for other renewables there's a lot of subsidies in the renewables today they're much cheaper uh, we had a foreign rate balance electricity where by using just a, a small average market price a pool price and for other energies as specialities as well it's not important i take a pool price just to calculate some values so that's how i reach 175 billion euro per year and this is the amount that i have to compare now to my green model though so the next sheet will show the figures of the fully green model um, i can i've changed my transition in one second and what would be the same cost in 2020 with my green model Calculation is a little bit more complicated. I don't have uh, the primary energies. I don't use fossil fuels anymore. So first of all, I have to calculate the additional cost concepts. One I said before, I have to do short term storage, one third part every day, or let's say one per third part globally, but shared between 365 days. I have to, I have to do short term storage. This has a cost. The calculation of the cost is very easy. I have a cost for my system price. I take 100 euro per kilowatt hour of system price, so position in 10 years. And if you are from the sector, you know that could be feasible. Uh, I have a lifespan of the system and then I can calculate the cost per kilowatt of storage. It is three cent, three euro cent per kilowatt, amazing where has reached a battery technology in 10 years, we'll talk about of something of three kilowatt, uh, sorry, three euro cent per kilowatt of storage for short term storage, which is highly required for our fully green energy system. Then the cost of long term storage, more complicated to calculate because we do not have enough systems on the market to have really clear uh, price references as well. We have only suppositions what will be the cost in 10 or 20 years if the technology is fully rolled out. Nevertheless, I made a simple calculation based on the green hydrogen price and I transferred, uh, I, I, uh, which includes a transformation cost based on the 
green price for green energy from uh, wind and so on. So you have a transformation cost. And if you use two times this transformation cost, one to hydrogen and then back to cell, you can at least make a supposition for the average storage cost using hydrogen, which in this case is nine cent per kilowatt hour, three times more than batteries. Okay. Hydrogen, three times more than batteries. On the other hand, you can storage whatever you want. You could storage of, of a, if you have enough technology of a whole country, if, a, if you have enough um, gas tanks, yeah, uh, sub, sub, uh, subsoil gas tanks and so on. We have already enough in Germany. Today use it for natural gas. So you, could really, you could really have enough energy storage with hydrogen for, for the seasonal storage that was required. The technology exists. Then, what do I use concerning on electric electricity-based renewables? Yeah. First of all, I have the inventory. I have what, what the already existing one. That is the same what we have in the sheet before. 15 cent per kilowatt hour. Then we have other renewables as well. As you can remember, that was, for example, the wood burning, biogas systems, biofuels and so on, all this block of other renewables that are not directly uh, wind and solar, for example, as well. That is another time with 15 cent per kilowatt hour, of cost. And then what well, the big block is the new solar and wind that I have to install. That is a cost in the system. I take a price, a PPA price of 10 cent. You will say, OK, today for big systems, of wind and solar, I could even reach, let's say, five cents, three cents, I don't know, could be lower. But on the other hand, we have to keep in mind that we want to roll out the technology in a massive way. So I cannot take the optimum case of uh, five cent, five euro cent for a PPA as a global situation, because I have to be able as well to go for uh, locations that are not so optimum, or if I want to roll out completely the wind power, maybe I have to accept that I'm in regions where it's a little bit less wind, but still interesting and upwind, but then you will not have these very aggressive PPA prices that you will have at a big optimized project. That way, to, I see it more realistic to take a PPA price of 10 euro cent, and then it's the same. You can sum up all this together, you reach 200 uh, billion euro of cost for the fully green energy production. Then I have to add the storage cost, short-term storage with lithium and long-term storage with hydrogen. With lithium, you see the, the amount it has to be storage, 30% of the global. And then uh, that uh, at, um, let's say, at a price of three uh, euro cent for, for kilowatt hour and then the long-term storage, nine cent per euro that I have to add as a cost. It's my storage cost, simply. I, I have to spend the money to storage this. The losses, as you remember, for storage, I considered already in the global amount. Though there are two parallel calculations. One, the amount of energy that was calculated before, and here we only talk about what does it cost me to do this storage. That is a different concept. Here's a monetary concept. And then, in addition, I have to create uh, geothermal energy. I need 1080 petajoule of geothermal energy, let's say 300 terawatt hour of deep geothermal energy. That is another time I consider this with 10 euro cent. Usually if you have to develop the drill and the site, it's less, five, three, it's for free really because it's only heat in the earth and you only need a pump. But I take a higher cost at the moment, especially because you have to roll out the system and you have to do all the investment. So the first 30 years, sure you will have a higher cost as well, it would not be able, would not be correct to to think about three euro cent for like a fully developed uh, site of CO terminal. You have to start from zero in some way, but it's very attractive because then for the next uh, one hundred thousand years you can have uh, free energy from a CO thermal. So if you add everything together, then you see that the green model. We are talking about three hundred ninety three billion euro. That would be my yearly spend for the green model. And cost comparison for one hundred seventy five. So I see, OK, I have an ex additional expenditure per year of one hundred eighteen 
billion euro. Okay, you would say, hmm, it's a lot of money. It's more expensive. Yes, directly it's more expensive. But what we do not take in account here is several aspects. First of all, uh, you have no external costs. So in 2018, there was not a really much external cost on the fossils. You did not have in any way uh, the carbon dioxide taxes or some supplementary cost concept. So this concept did not in, does not include external cost. So it's not correct. You have to, t to calculate the external cost and the damage of fossils to the system. That is one aspect. And another t thing is what we know now. These are fossil fuel prices from 2018. But today we talk about a new situation. We talk about a crisis situation. And in a crisis situation, then we have a new cost situation that will I show in the following sheets. Okay, what you can see here is a comparison of different years. So I'm saying energy consumption of 2020, that is the energy amount that I consider for all the different price scenarios. But then I have a look at the fossil price 2018, fossil price 2020 and fossil price 2022. So I made the same calculation for what would be the extra effort or the extra cost for my green model if I go for the different energy price in 2018, 2020 and 2022. Okay, 2018 I calculate already. I know I have to spend 118 billion euro more per year if I want to make fully green energy instead of the fossil model. 2020 it would have been even more. Why? Because the fossils were extremely cheap and then 2020, okay, I take this, but it's not really interesting as a comparison. But then 2022, current situation, if you take the fossil prices, which have pushed up a lot, as you know, the gas, oil and so on, then uh, we have only 47 billion euro more that we have to spend for the fully green model. So if I could be um, uh, the magic man and just change uh, my energy model, I would have only spent 15 billion euro more of cost per year if I would have would be able to change my model in one second. So everybody would say, okay, for 15 billion, where I have to sign, I would like to do this tomorrow, no, based on the current crisis situation. Nevertheless, um, this is a situation of the gross effect, but then I have to calculate the net effect. What does the net effect mean? Uh, from my macroeconomic product and yield, I uh, do import of oil and gas and this money is lost. It's for me a negative production. I have to take my money. I have to pay uh, the countries that are making oil and gas. Um, if I go to my fully green model, I stop importing this product. So it is a plus for me. I can take this on, on favor of my macroeconomic account. Nevertheless, I cannot take this fully because uh, this, uh, this uh, let's say, this net effect, this positive effect from by reduction of import, I cannot take it fully. I only take a, uh, 70 percent because I have to as well to import uh, green energy sources like, uh, for example, uh, solar panels, wind energy, steel to produce wind energy plants and so on. So I can I have a reduction uh, net effect and then I have net additional expense. So that is what I really have to calculate. What is the real extra cost that I have if I change to the green model? It's much lower. And the interesting is that it's showing in 2022 you are even positive. Yeah. So you do not have an additional expense. You save 46 billion euro with a new model. This means for if we would be able, for example, today we change in one second our model, then we would be even cheaper, 1.3% uh, less from the cross national product, let's say, from the cross domestic product would be the uh, extra effort less. And per household, it means, let's say, 1000 uh, euro less per household and per year. On these figures is shown based on 2022 is not finished. We're now in 2022. So 2022 is just an estimate. Um, and the other, I did not consider any external effects because please do not forget why do we want to go green? We want to go green because of the necessity to 
a substitute, a climate protection and so on. So in the fossil cost that is shown in this sheet, there is no external cost calculated for the damage that is doing the fossils to the climate. Only for this I would be able to change the model and that's why the European community agreed to go completely green and carbon dioxide free. But I want to show you as well that when you make the macroeconomic calculations based on the cost situation we have today, even based on this, it would be the best thing to do from the cost point of view, from the macroeconomic cost point of view, to go for a fully green model. Yeah, okay, that was the end of my presentation. I hope it was interesting. I would like to comment my, my personal point of view of the things as well. I'd like to, to make some personal remarks on this uh, situation. First of all, my opinion is that Europe must be uh, completely independent. So until today, there were a lot of models where say, okay, we bring green energy from Australia, we bring from Chile and so on. Why do you want to bring energy from other countries? Or we bring it from Africa. There's a hydropower plant. We take it, we make hydrogen. For me, it's greenwashing. You take green energy from countries that do not have enough green energy of their own. You bring it to Europe just that uh, the pol some political parties can say that we have a green system does not make a sense. Green means completely green by your own. Europe has enough resources, you have southern countries with a lot of sun, you have uh, Germany with a lot of wind or with a mixed situation, you have geothermal situation. If we want to go green, we have enough sources. We just have to apply these sources. The European community concerning Hydrogen has a very clear strategy. Say, so if you want to make green hydrogen, you have to take, you have to create new production capacity of green energy. Why? Because what did you see in the past? For example, you have uh, some green energy production or some kilowatt hour of green energy, and this is taking some company, making a campaign, I'm using the green energy. Next year they stop, they use fossil, and the next company take making a campaign. There's a lot of greenwashing. The only thing is that really helps for to going forward is new production capacity of green energy. So this is the only only success of a political party in the future to say, okay, for example, every year I have reached my system, I had to make a lot of effort, for example, in Germany, 150 petajoule more of energy produced every year. All the rest is greenwashing, for example. An electrical car is an application technology for green energy, but is not green energy. Hydrogen is just a storage for green energy, it's not green energy. So uh, the, the politicians they explained a lot to the people of uh, pilot projects for storage, for electrical and so on. If I take my electrical car and I take the electricity from a carbon uh, plant, uh, carbon electricity plant, power plant, that's not green. The only green effect is that in my city where I'm driving with electric car, I have uh, no emission, but green means green energy. And that is where, for example, in Germany, everything, all the political parties until today have failed. Okay, I hope, uh, I hope you liked my presentation and uh, see you next time.